Hello and welcome to this edition of Pop and Scott Talk Baseball. Uh, getting into uh, the first weekend of the season. You know, the, we, there's two games in Korea, but this is the first weekend of the season. Um, real quick, any takeaways? I know we were talking a little bit before we got on uh, so far across the league. Well, I have to mention this. I watched about five innings the other night, and then I had to go to bed. The number one in college baseball. The number one team was playing the number eight team. That was a good ball game. Those two teams, LSU's number eight and Arkansas is number one now. Uh, and, I mean, you talk about a good two good teams, especially on defense. They were making plays. Outfielders, in, I mean, it was just – I just I, the college game, it, it's a little too long sometimes, but it's – those kids can play. I just wanted yeah. to mention that. Arkansas. Yeah. Is- I, sometimes you wish there were seven inning games. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but, you oh, know. Yeah. One other thing, University of Virginia. I have to mention this because you and I are University of Virginia fans. For the first time in the history of the NCAA, the University of Women, uh, Virginia's women's swimming and diving team has won the national championship for four straight years. That is, uh, they've said that's an outstanding feat to be able to recruit all those swimmers and divers and win every year. So, I mean, I just thought I'd mention that because we're UVA fans. Right. Uh, Yeah. The other thing is this. Yeah. Oh, we, uh, umpires. We got to get the strike zone straight. I agree. Uh, I don't know if you saw it or not. Saturday, the Phillies. We're playing Atlanta. Now, that was yesterday. We're taping on Sunday. Atlanta scored 37 runs. So that it didn't, you know, I think they missed a field goal. Yeah. But in the first inning, Freed's got two outs. Philadelphia's got somebody on. They got people on. They've got two outs. Now I would I couldn't watch the game. I was watching the Orioles and, and the Nationals. So in their two games. Free two strikes, throws the ball right down the middle. I mean, I mean, it's right down the middle. Ball. So then after that, he walks that he walks that guy, and then they the Philly scored three runs. And, and and got the lead. I mean, they could have cost him the ball game. Now Atlanta came back and scored a million runs, but this guy's name was Bruce Dreckman, the umpire. Obviously, he was trained by either C. B. Buckner or uh, Angel Hernandez. One of the other guys was his trainer. <laughs> because they're the only other umpires that I can remember. Well, there's a couple of older ones that could miss a call that bad. Wes. I mean, it could have cost them a ball game. And that's – so now everybody's out screaming. You know, I, I thought one post was funny. The guy said, Angel, <laughs> Shohei Otani must have bred on the Phillies. Um, but, uh, I mean, it. The, people are screaming they want the um, – Automatic umping now because that's they say, Yeah, I mean, like this. I, I, I didn't see that, but it doesn't surprise me. I have seen some very questionable things, uh, you know, even with blocking the bag, um, calls they were making in the preseason games. I know it's supposed to be a big deal. I'm watching, um, the Mets game, of course, and DJ, uh, DJ, uh, used to play for or Stewart, gets picked off of first by the guy, the cannon that's behind the Brewers plate, uh, one of the Cacheras brothers. Um, and the first baseman, uh, Reese Hoskins, is clearly with his foot, it was nowhere for him to go. He slid back into it. Now, back in the day, we were taught to do that first, but I thought that was blocking the bag. They've been calling it. In they call it, they call it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sitting here watching a highlight now. Reese Hoskins, uh, also Friday, overslides the bag through Jeff McNeil. Now, Jeff McNeil had plenty of time to get out the way or hopping. You know, the old school second baseman turning two. Well, that skill's gone now because they don't have to do that. To me, it wasn't a bad play by Reese Hoskins, but McNeil gets comes up 
dropping a few choice words on him right face to face. Hoskins runs over to the bench and then he wants to bulk up after he runs over to his bench. He don't yeah. say a word until he runs off the field. Yeah. And then they uh, threw at him later. Yeah, and the next day they well, they threw behind him. Um, and then you know, Reese waits for the whole team. The pitcher comes all the way to the plate to get the ball. Reese waits for everybody and their brother to get between him and the pitcher. Well, I mean, him. his his, um, his coach, his his manager's hollering at him, don't do a thing. I don't want you suspended. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's so he didn't do but, anything today. I just saw where the pitcher got suspended for three games, right? Right. Well, the way they're pitching, it might be an upgrade. Um, but well, the other thing is, too, son, that play at second base. The rule is when you slide into the bag, as long as you stay in contact with the bag, you haven't done anything wrong. That's the rule. Well, and that's iffy because you can't you can't slide left or right of the bag and stick your hand out like you used to do. You have no, to slide he, he slid, the bag. He slid right over the bag he and went right through in. it. I, I don't have a problem with the play. I didn't and McNeil, I think McNeil was Shit didn't have anything to say, but my my point of it was was Reese Hoskins waited to get over to the bench before yeah. he said anything, um, and then that caused the uproar. Uh, but you know, uh, yeah, when like Toronto didn't... and Toronto and Tampa Bay got into it yesterday at third yeah. base, yeah. What was that pitcher thinking he got three games? He shoved the guy in the face. I mean, what are yeah. you doing? Well, you know these guys. They're ready to play. I think uh, what I was going to tell you before, I think, and I think I talked about this a little bit with you last week, I think there's a lot of parity now in baseball. That's the reason why you can have the Diamondbacks come out of nowhere last year and go to a World Series. I think the the ceiling, this uh, soft salary cap is starting to – uh, you know, the Astros did not sign Montgomery because of that. Uh, the Yankees wouldn't sign because of that. There's diff that, that it's starting to teams are starting to feel it. So it's starting to be a little bit more parity in the league. So that brings everybody closer together. It makes the games. I mean, we talked about it last year. Pitching in the league is not very good. Um, there's not a lot of depth through in the league and uh it's a it, so these pitchers they're fighting tooth and nail to stay in the league there's always cleveland, somebody younger coming cleveland has played what three games and they've scored 30 runs yeah the orioles are scoring touchdowns they're not scoring runs right they score touchdowns in those first two games I yeah watched, so i watched nine runs they scored nine runs in the sixth inning yesterday before um the angels got an out right i I can't watch the the Orioles games, which I would love to do, but uh, I can't. I couldn't watch the Phillies Braves games, which is huge in our division. Um, so I've been watching. I watched a little bit of Twins on opening day, uh, and of course, uh, Royce Lewis leaves the game limping after yeah. rounding second base, uh, which is horrible for the game because he's such a good player. Correa fouls one off his foot, and he's out there. But he I don't think he ever came back to game, and he missed a lot of time last year. Uh, you know, so I'm sitting there like, oh, here's my pick. Because <laughs> I just feel like this is their year to get everything together. Their pitcher pitched well. Um, you know, I my friends are telling me the Angels look very, very bad against the Orioles, but I don't know if it's that or if the Orioles are just that good. Uh, Brewers just scored again on the Mets. Uh, the Ori- Orioles, uh, the, the 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 pitching for the Angels is the same as always been. I mean, that's that was well. I'm Corbin you, Burns had a hell of a first. The Orioles are good. The Orioles are good, but they're not that good. Right. That's there's a little bit of both there. I mean, and, and the Yankees are just pounding. They're coming back on. Uh, see. People said at the beginning of the year, I saw a lot of the, the the experts, of which I'm not, come out and say that the Phillies had the best bullpen in baseball. That's why a lot of that's why when I heard all that, I was one reason I picked the Phillies to go to the World Series. But I thought the best bullpen in baseball was the same one that was the best baseball uh, bullpen in baseball last year was the Yankees by earned run average. 
So I, they've done well. The Houston bullpen has collapsed against the Yankees, and they've lived, they've given up two uh, leads in late innings and lost both games. So, uh, I mean, it's it's only the first weekend of the season, and there's going to be trades and call ups and all that. Uh, in in fact, we were talking about you were talking about Jordan Montgomery, and he signed with the Arizona Diamondbacks one year, twenty five million. And there's a vesting uh, for a, a, another year of vesting of 25 million if both sides agree for the two years. So he's got. So yeah, he signs that deal. Now this guy was wanted number one money. He's not even going to be the number two pitcher in that rotation. He'll be the number three pitcher in that rotation. I don't yeah. think he's better than either one of the first two guys in that rotation. So one of them pitched yesterday. I mean, I watched been watching the Diamondbacks because I I they're exciting to watch. Speed up and down the lineup. They hit well. Uh and they play good and defense. And they're one of the top defenses. Yeah. Uh so I've watched them play a little bit. Uh you know, I I have the MLB package, so I can sit here and watch games all over the country. I, I have them on all the time. I might be doing other things, playing video games or watching a regular TV show, but I'll have it on, on a side screen, um, catching, catching some of the games. Uh, like right now I have the Mets Brewers on. Um, yeah. The other room of the Orioles and, uh, the Orioles are playing again. And I do uh, have it for free this year though, through my T-Mobile. So I don't, if they black out games, okay. I got it for free. I'm not really yeah. Yeah. You, you won't squawk as much. Yeah. I, th- I still think it's dumb, but it is. It's stupid to, yeah. to black you out. You're in Winston Salem, North Carolina. For all of you, for you people that are watching this program in North Carolina, fine. But if you're in California, my son lives in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Cincinnati is not next door. It's in <laughs> Baltimore, Washington. <laughs> they, they black out. Get, uh, the Cincinnati Reds are blacked out. He can't watch the Cin- the Cincinnati Reds. I can't. I can't watch the Braves in. Either. And they're in Atlanta. Like four teams, yeah. At, none of these places are less than five hours from me. So they're they all no five sense. hours or more from me. They make no sense. It makes no sense, but there we go. Yeah. Oh, and I, that's why I wish, you know, if they had a team down the street, I, that would be the only game team blacked out, but it's not. So if the dash was the White Sox one team, then I, that's what I'd be doing. Uh, Alvarez, ah, they got so good. All right. He hit his first home run yesterday and gets his hit first at bat today. So do yeah. I want to The Cubs and the Dodgers uh, are going to open the 2025 season in Japan. They're going to do the game, two games in Japan like they did in Korea this year. And, oh, gee whiz, the Dodgers are one of them. <laughs> uh, because they got, you know, Yamamoto and Otani, if Otani is not suspended. Um, so they're going to open there. Uh, we talked about Jordan Montgomery. Um, the Seattle Seahawks, <laughs> and I think that Jordan Montgomery. Now, don't get me wrong. By him going to the Diamondbacks, oh, da- deepens their pitching rotation. And that's. Did you pick them to win that oh, division? Yeah. I picked them to so, win. The I, to me, that puts them over the Dodgers. I picked them to win the division before they had the Montgomery. Right. Yeah, I, I really do because I think they're they're I so. I don't trust the Dodgers pitching. I don't. Right, in in the Diamondbacks uh, bullpen and coach the coaching staff, they're not traditionalists, right? So it's a very flexible bullpen. One guy could close for a week, and then somebody else might or right. whatever exactly. the situation brings. So the I, Mariners, I do. The Mariners released uh, uh, Brian Anderson, third baseman. He'd been in the league for quite a while, and so he might retire. Um, yeah, that's – I agree, son. That makes Arizona that much better. Yeah, and their, their lineup, I watched them a little bit this weekend so far. Because they, they play – since they're in Arizona, they play between the East Coast and the West Coast, so I usually watch someone. And it's not a West Coast series that really grabs me. The Mariners in Boston or – Dodgers or Padres and Giants, none of those really excite me. Um, all that well, the game—it's a night game. It's coming on at ten o'clock here. 
I go to bed at quarter to 11. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'll am i see three or four innings and that's it. Well, I work second shifts. So that's mainly so the game. Don't I watch the whole game. Yeah. So. Well, your boy, but, Will Smith, signed a 10-year uh, contract for $140 million with the Dodgers. It's the longest uh, catcher, a contract for a catcher in the league, history of baseball. He just doesn't. Nobody knows about him unless you're on the, you know, L.A. He made the all-star team last year. He was on Team USA. Uh, I, 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 when they were uh, the year before COVID, it ended COVID when they won the World Series. I mean, he just proved to me if you're if you watch baseball, he just proves how much of a great player he is. And I and I I'm drawn to catchers anyway, but uh, I I just think he's so highly overlooked in the league. Well, another thing, um, ESPN has decided to opt out of their TV contract with Major League Baseball after the 2025 season. Uh, they, can they, you imagine? They are signed up through 2028, but they can opt out after 2025, and they've decided to opt out because they said the ratings are down. Well, not only that, it, it they spend so much money on sports. Uh, I don't know. You know, they've talked about getting rid of some of their channels. If you're all, if you're, if your ESPN, ABC, and Disney gets cut off or whatever, because they're always fighting with somebody about pricing. Right. Everything's uh, all that's owned by Disney. Right, and it, it's just. Uh, you know, ESPNs they, they let go of everybody. <laughs> they they pay basically two heavy contracts and then everybody else gets paid about a bologna sandwich and chips yeah. um, for their dinner. Uh so you know it, it it's gonna it's gonna I don't know who is gonna pick it up. I know TBS what it might be is another streaming service. You got Apple on Friday night, you got Peacock CBS on Saturday, Peacock on Sunday noon game, right? Something like oh, I, I don't know because I can't get it this game, week. So. Um, but tonight is the ESPN game. I, I it's just weird. I don't I can't remember Sunday night without a major league baseball game. Well, I guess what they're gonna do is they'll you know they'll fill it in with the uh the Waco, Texas uh pickleball league. I mean it's uh, it, I don't know. They'll they'll they have to put something on. It's a sports network. I mean, they they're gonna have to fill it with something. Oh, it'll, be, it'll be NBA and yeah, uh, that's what they'll NHL do. till till the you know the end of the playoffs. Right. Yeah. But uh, you know that's I watch the NHL, but I don't watch the NBA. So yeah. Anyway, I, mean, I thought I'd mention that. That's the that's the plan. And I mean. Don't they have the women's basketball too? College basketball? Uh, yes, because it's on Channel Eight and ESPN. It's on ESPN. Right, so on ABC right now on ABC. Uh, South Carolina is playing Oregon State in mean, the women's. That's, that sport is seeming to. Oh, that. I made, I made that this. I made this statement. If, with with this group of talent that's in college and coming out. If the college game doesn't make a huge step and the WA the WNBA doesn't make a huge step, it never will. It, no. it just never will. It, well, it, you might as well just give it up. They said yesterday uh, during uh, the, the Connecticut uh, game when the Connecticut was playing Duke that uh, teams like Connecticut and uh, the ACC schools, uh, some of the Southeastern Conference schools, South Carolina and LSU and some of the other ones, um, and then UCLA and USC and teams like that, they they're going to they go to Boise, Idaho to play Idaho State, and there's nine thousand people in the stands. Right. Every place they went, they're selling out because these girls, they're well known now. This NIL, I mean, I turn on the TV and I see State Farm commercials, and and there's uh, uh, Caitlin Clark doing a State Farm commercial, then she's doing a T-Mobile commercial. So I mean. It, it, these girls are so well known now, and it, the sport has become so popular, and they're so much more talented than they used to be, that it's just, it's just, you know, it's just. And I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. They said uh, women's softball is gaining more popularity too, the college softball game. 
So women's sports is getting a little more popular, and that's good. Oh, the, the Nationals. My Washington Nationals, hello. I watched the game, their first game, and I thought I'd uh, fallen down the rabbit hole and woke up last year because it was the same game I saw last year. They couldn't pitch, they couldn't hit, and they couldn't feel. And other, I thought that they had a great team. But they looked the same. Then yesterday they came back and won in the ninth inning, and they'd really look good doing it. Now, but their third baseman, the first game of the season, they're warming up on the first inning. He takes a ground ball to throw it to third, I mean to first, and broke his thumb. <laughs> Caught the ground ball and broke his thumb. His name was Nick Senzel. Um, so they called up a young man named Trey Lipscomb, uh, just tall, skinny kid. He, Of course, they, did, they had to play a utility guy there the first game. But Saturday, it had Trey Lipscomb over there. And he's 23 years old. His family was in the stands. First time up. He gets a base hit and steals second base. The first time anybody for the Nationals has ever gotten a hit in their first game as a National and stolen a base. And, of course, his family was going berserk out there, a 23-year-old kid. And when he came back to the dugout after, <laughs> after, he, after the inning was over, he came back to the dugout, and, of course, they broke for a commercial. But when they came back, they showed him, and all the, the team turned their back on him. Yeah. And no, nobody would congratulate him. They let him go in there and get his glove and go back out to the. And he's looking around like, "What's going on?" Well, that was kind of funny. But anyway, he. Well, that's actually big respect that they do. Oh, yeah. that. And then the last out of the game, uh, there was Cincinnati Red uh, ball player hit a little grounder down to third baseline. One of those sixteen hoppers. That kid came in and scooped that thing up barehanded and fired a shot to third first base and got the guy by an eyelash. So. They said he wanted he helped him in the beginning and helped him in the end. And the and the Nationals scored three runs in the ninth inning. They they were down two uh in the bottom of the eighth. Cincinnati scored two and the Nationals scored three in the top of the ninth and came back and won the ball game. Yeah, I saw uh I have Keybert Ruiz in my fantasy league and I saw he'd had a pretty good game. Oh last my time. gosh. Yeah. Oh yeah. He hit the home run to tie the game up in the seventh inning. Right. And and I mean t this kid Right now, he's got to be one of the top 10 catchers in baseball. By the end of the year, he might be one of the top five. Yeah, it, I, I'm a big Keybert Ruiz fan. I also have Logan O'Hoppy for the Angels, who I like as well. Too. Yeah, he's good, too. Uh, but, I mean, I, it's, it's, uh, it was just something that this young man broke his thumb and he gave this other kid a chance, and he took a, he took advantage of it. Well, that's what it is. You know, you, you have to be uh, ready for your opportunity when it presents itself. Yeah. Because the Washington, if you're a young player, 23 is really not young coming up for your first time in the uh, majors, but it's it's not old either. Uh, and, and you do that, you, you become people. I mean, I wish the Mets had a third baseman like that. <laughs> I, 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 I was high on our third baseman, Brett Beatty, but, um, yeah, he's just – I don't think he's the guy. He's not the future at third. Yeah. Well, the Yankees traded for um, another starting pitcher. I mean, he's not well known. The J, uh, the JT Brubaker from the Pirates. Um, oh well, he's not bad. But th these teams want depth because they know in this season, well, I mean, have a pitcher or two that's going to have missed games. The Cy Young guy's out for a while, so you yeah. got to, they got to get some. Oh, I know he's my number one pick on my fantasy team. And uh, I, I got him and uh, Yuri uh, Perez for. Now you were you were making you mentioned the fact that uh, every time um, a Minnesota Twin ran the bases, he got hurt, um, and, and you know, and it wasn't even uh, the guy that gets hurt all the time. So <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> the Cubs. I picked the Cubs to win the Central. Their ace, um, Justin Steele. He's pitching the opening game. Scores one to one. Guy hits a little ground ball. No, he bunted it down to first baseline. He comes in and scoops it up. Made an off, kind of off balance throw to first base to get the guy. Rolled over on the ground, couldn't get up. Messed his hammy up, his hamstring. So 
They're not sure how long he's going to be out. He didn't tear it or anything, but it's strange. Well, uh, hamstrings and groins and ab muscles early in the year. And you're uh, in the calves. And, I mean, yeah. and when you think they stop hurting, I had a calf, I had a calf pull, and every time I tried it, I thought it was over with when I played softball. Every time I thought, thought it was over with, I'd run the base, and now that thing started hurting again. But uh, <clears throat> uh, speaking of that, Atlanta's uh, catcher, Sean Murphy, went on the um, injured list for uh, an oblique. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he went on there yesterday. So he, he's out. <laughs> uh, Nelson Cruz uh, signed a one-day contract with the Seattle Mariners and retired as a Seattle Mariner. So Cool. And the Texas Rangers, some of their fans were very upset because they thought he should have retired as a Texas Ranger. But he played for every team in the league. Maybe, so maybe he'll get a one-day contract with them. Well, if he, could, if he had a one-day contract with everybody, he could retire from 23 teams. <laughs> with the Padres. Washington. Washington. Baltimore. <laughs> he played with everybody. Um, and finally this. Oh, the magic word. I've been waiting for it. this thing with Boris and his and his guys. I want nine years, $300 million, and they're not giving it to me. Yeah, I was waiting for the word, the key word from the 1980s, collusion. Collusion. Yes, oh, the owners are colluding against my player. Yeah, they are. In, in matter of fact, they are, Boris, because they're not the guys you want them to be. <laughs> so, well, see, I mean, see, the players you're young. representing are not the best ones out there. I remember in the late seventies and early when this came, this collusion came up, and then the federal government got involved, and they they more or less proved that the owners said we're not paying these contracts. They accused them of collusion. Then they had to pay. Right. Were, well, this comes to, up every every so often. They were forced to pay exorbitant contracts to the players, or they were going to be fined by the federal government. Yeah. Or they were going to lose their antitrust exemption. Right. So they were forced to pay him. So this is what Bo Boris is now. He's trying to fall back on this, trying to get the federal government. Yeah, to but it, it comes up money. about every every other year. Somebody is blacklisted. or If anybody has a gripe, it should be Trevor Bauer still. I mean, I, I keep saying it. I'm not a huge Trevor Bauer fan, but there's worse assholes in the league. Excuse my language. Uh, that and have also played in the past. You might not like his antics, but he gets the job done. And I, I don't even you want to talk about somebody that's being colluded against. Still, I don't think he'll ever and play he, in the major. He season. pitched well for that Mexican team that beat the Yankees against the Yankees. Yeah, and the Yankees didn't sign him because nobody wants any. They're they don't want to sign him because of uh, bad pub. Yeah, bad publicity and uh, you know political correctness. That's that's yeah, all that's all it is. Even though even though it was found to be a bunch of bull, um, they just won't. Nobody wants to touch him. I mean, a woman came out and said she made up the whole thing. Well, and she didn't do that till he came out with it. He kept saying he had the receipts and he had the receipts. And then she because so, he was going to sue yeah. her. Yeah. Well, it was a it was a counter suit suit. So she dropped it, hers if he dropped his, and that's what happened. Because it wasn't going, to, it got, it wasn't going to a legal court. It was going to a, uh, the same thing that like Trump got sued in or whatever. So um, that type of court. But well, you know, MLB, it doesn't matter if you're accused in a domestic thing. That's why these that couple of players have fell victim to this because of it. That's. That's why I told everybody last year, pump the brakes on Wander Franco, but it seems like Wander Franco is guilty. But I don't know yet until he goes to court. But. Well, they've got uh, – don't they have another player, Tampa Bay, that got caught this in somewhere else doing the same thing? Yeah, who knows? I don't I, – I, I don't – if. I'm not know, sure. I, I, tend to, I tend to like to watch the sports itself and not – yeah, not the uh, the outside stuff can handle itself. I just right. want to, I, I want to the watch the whole Otani thing. Everybody wants to compare it to Pete Rose or Wander Franco or other things that have happened. Well, did you see his press? That he's getting treated differently. I'm like, all those things are not the same. Did you see his press conference? 
No, because I just don't okay. care. Okay. Here's the thing. He has his interpreter and his press conference. He has his statement written out. He had answers to some questions that he was get, given. He had him, He had answers written out in case those were the questions. But he had a statement. It was written. Fans went crazy. The clowns on social media, they went crazy. They ought to have big shoes and red nose because they'd be right at home in the circus. Did you see that? He had to read all his answers. We got two old coots running for president. Neither, <laughs> one, of them, neither one of them can read a teleprompter and put three sentences together. Don't right. tell me about reading. Right. He's reading the answers because he's from Japan and doesn't speak the language. No, he, he does, but not And well. the answers he gave were the same ones that came out where when it was that the young man had stolen the money. This is this is where all I this is where I'm sitting here yesterday watching the ball games and Friday. And every commercial break was a DraftKings or something to do, Caesar, somebody trying to get me to gamble. And the next commercial was New Balance with, uh, guess who, uh, Otani. So I don't care. <laughs> I just don't care. Yeah, yeah, but see, the other, thing is, the other thing is this. The other thing is this. He didn't say this in the in – the, um, but the, the investigation that's going on right now – the MLB wants to be done with it real quick. Manfred said, right. we want to get this out of the way and get this behind us. Right. The federal government is going to drag this out 17 years. So to forget about that. The man will be, he'd be 75 years old with 10 grandchildren before they ever come up with anything. He might get his first payment of the deferment before. Exactly. Before somebody says anything. <laughs> but this is the, this is the thing that drives me crazy is that, it's more or less come out now that the reason the first statement was that Otani was paying it for him to help his friend out was that Otani didn't want to come out and say that the young man was stealing from him because he knew he'd be in more trouble. Yeah, they because they, they were friends. That's what my first question they were was. Friends. He was, he was covered. He he Otani claims he did not gamble. He didn't. It was it was the interpreter who gambled. When he found out about it, he found out about it when the guy was stealing his money. He went up to the hotel room, confronted him. The, the, the guy, he admitted it, that he was stealing the money. So then Otani called his agent and called his uh, uh, financial people and told them about it. So they were all over it. Then he called the Dodgers and told them about it. So then the Dodgers called... Otani's financial people found out he was telling the truth and fired the guy. And now he, that's what he was, that's what they think was what happened, or that's what they feel is what happened, that he was actually, um, he said that first, that he was paying it because he was trying to protect guys some. But he, I'm not going to sit here and call him a liar. I'm just not. I wasn't there when he – if he bet on something and they find out, then suspend him. But until then, hey, just do the investigation and, and be done with it. That's I need to get a new hat. I just seen something I ain't seen in a long time, a one, two, three, double play. Oh, that's right. You're six – yeah. yeah, I, yeah I, saw uh, three, I saw three hats in the hat store the other day, and, oh, they look good. It was a Clemente hat. Uh, there was a Jackie Robinson hat and an old Washington Senators hat. And then I saw the prices and I decided to keep this. Um, I'm not spending 50 bucks on a hat. That's I'm sorry. Yeah. That's yeah. not the old man is too frugal now. I'm just I I, I have a Clemente actually Puerto Rico when TV played for Puerto Rico hat uh behind me. Uh so I guess my I wanna kind of end it like so, any surprises to you this weekend so far? Like, any players jumping out at you uh, that you really was not on your radar? Um, well, I will say this. Uh, Gunnar Henderson won the uh, 
rookie of the year last year because of his second half performance. His first half stunk, but the second half he won it. This kid might win the most valuable player if he keeps playing like he's doing it. This that was a, one of them I was going to talk. Oh, about this here. kid, he he was crushing. He got his interview after the game yesterday because he went three for five and drove in four or five runs. I mean, he is just having an outstanding year. Yeah. Uh, the other person that's going crazy, no surprise, is Acuna. Now, Soto's playing well too. Yeah, Soto. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum. The Houston Astros stink. For, after the first two games, they stink. Now, they're hitting the ball okay, but they can't pitch. Bullpen's horrible. The White Sox and the Athletics have already been mathematically eliminated from the pennant race. So, I mean, some of these teams, if, if you live in Las Vegas, folks, be careful what you wish for. Because unless that owner of the Athletics decides he wants to win, you're going to have the same thing they got. Well, that's his plan is he wants to, once they get there. And make to, all the money, then he goes, he'll he spend some of it. Well, he, he he wants to do, okay, we got a field, wants to know when they're going to do it and build up for that season. Kind of like the way the Marlins did going into their new stadium. I hope they didn't do it. I hope he doesn't do it the same way the Mets did. <laughs> but that, that's oh, kind of. Let's sign two 75-year-old pitchers. Now, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Uh, well, they're still paying for this year because they couldn't. Oh, guess what? I found out the other day that Scherzer is being paid by the Texas Rangers, and he's not playing. He's being paid by the Texas Rangers. He's yeah. being paid by the New York Mets. He's the being Nationals. paid by the Washington Nationals. The Nationals are still paying a small part of, it, of the contract he had when he was in Washington. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's a team, and, I, and, wow. and I've and I've watched these these this team parts of two of their games because I like the team they're playing against. I like watching them. The Rockies. I've talked about their worst defense in baseball last year. Ain't got any better this year. They look like uh, <laughs> Keystone Cops. Right. They need a buzzer in the ball so they can go find it because <laughs> I, I just. Every once in a while, they run into one at the plate because um, they're playing the Diamondbacks. Um, outside of that, they they look bad. They really look bad. Yeah. Uh, I I don't. I it's very confusing trying to figure out the the team where they're trying to go. How they? I I don't know. But and, they've been uh, like that for years, son. It, well, that's what I, you so, have. You would think by now you would see a direction, and I don't see a direction. You don't hear anything about their minor league system being any good. They don't make any moves. They get rid of the the face of the team and pick up another big contract uh, that's bigger than the the one that you got rid of. And you know, at your third base, I almost said Lingora, but that's not. It's uh, Arenado. Arenado. I don't. I was like, I'm, I'm sitting here going. You overpaid for a guy, Chris Bryant, that was done when he was with the Cubs. He hasn't done anything, you know. Um, I, I, I just – it's frustrating to watch, to me, a team that's that bad. At least with Oakland, you have a feeling that the owner's doing it on purpose. I don't get that feeling in Colorado. I just think it's just – Well, I mean, there's a few uh, teams that every year they're not very good. A, I think Boston is trying to get draft picks. Well, I yeah, really but Boston, but Boston has been good. Right. Not, the last two years they've been bad. Well, and they it, weren't that bad last year. They I were just going to come out them. that they're, you know, they're not going to go bankrupt, but you know they're losing money and, uh, you know, uh, this is how bad the Mets are. They're the poor announcers. Their their board fell down showing all the the connections and everything behind them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you got you got a Hall of Fame announcer. Well, who will be a Hall of Fame announcer? Two guys, Dar- uh, Ron Darling and, and Keith Hernandez up there, and they got pieces of stuff falling down. <laughs> well, I mean, it's in every in every sport, there are teams that are just plain bad. And in yeah. baseball, it's the Oakland A's. 
the Colorado Rockies, the Chicago White Sox, usually Kansas City, but all of them have been good at one time or another. Right. Colorado went to a World Series one year. Yeah. It's been a long time ago. But they, but they, but there's just some teams that you just like Pittsburgh. You just know they're not going to do much. So if you're, it's Charlie just Blackman. Do you try to get off that team? That poor guy's been there his whole career. Well, he you know, loves he, he loves living in the in that area. I, I bet he does. I bet he does. But, but he could probably walk up and down the street, and nobody knows who the hell he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and they do they do have a high attendance, even though yeah, they don't. The, Teams in the, that area, Denver, love sports. They love, they support their teams. They t- they support the basketball team, the football team, the hockey team, the baseball team. Well, they fought to keep the hockey team. It was going to leave. Right. Yeah. So I mean, that you know, I but that that's what I'm saying. If I got a, I, I feel that way with Oakland. Oakland, though, you got to, you know, they've had good teams, so they're spoiled. And it wasn't that long ago they were, you know, they were getting in as a wild card team before they added a wild card, two more wild cards, or one more, whatever. Uh, so, I just feel like, I just feel like, uh, you know, it, you get frustrated. I, I, I've been watching a little bit of Pirates too, and they look like they're looks like, like they're going to be competitive. The Pirates. The Pirates, look, I, I saw them in spring training some games, and they look good. And I'm, it, who knows, maybe this year they'll do better. Uh, Cincinnati, uh, they lost yesterday, but th- they look good. They're, they've got a lot of young players. I, I think young they're teams. so young. I, I feel like that's a team that's going to get better. You know, Detroit, I, I think Detroit's going to do pretty well. Yeah, but, but, see, it's just like in the National Football League, you got that hard salary cap. Right. So technically speaking, everybody ought to be pretty even, Stephen, because you can't and do they, it so much. And their formula for for right. uh, for their scheduling is yeah. The only problem in the National Football League is that you got one team and and thirty one clown cars because you unless you have Patrick Mahomes at quarterback, you're not going to win the Super Bowl. So that means there's thirty one teams that aren't going to win the Super Bowl. That's it. It's over. So just pencil it in. Unless he gets hurt, pencil it in. So, but in baseball, you usually have the blue bloods like the Dodgers and the Braves and the Yankees, you know, and now uh, the Orioles have come back up where they used to be. But see, I'm so old. (laughs) I remember uh, before most of your friends, I remember back in the 70s when you were just a little kid, what the Oakland A's used to have. Well, you had. Yeah, they were good in the in the late eighties and early nineties. Right, and they get in the playoffs every year and lose to the Yankees because that's how good the Yankees. Well, they were in the in the uh, the Bay Series where they had. They were in the, the Bay uh, Series with the San Francisco Giants when they had right. Conseco and uh, uh, with the earthquake. And I'm right. like, that was one of the best World Series uh, game, series ever. That, uh, but the, it wasn't that long ago when they were playing Billy Ball. And using they were using sabermetrics and all that stuff. They're the ones that brought it in they to make it that. cool. I don't know if they started it, but they made it cool. And they were making the playoffs then. And I'm like, they won't win in the division, but they were making the playoffs. And I mean I feel well, sorry for the people. I feel sorry for the fans in Oakland because the city actually made a, a real hard effort to keep that team. And he the owner just wanted to move and MLB wanted them to move because they want a team. They want a uh, franchise in Las Vegas. Yeah. So, Without uh, putting a new – so that, that would free them up to put the two new teams somewhere else. Yeah. Portland and Oklahoma City. But I – is, is that where you're thinking? No, I'm thinking it might, might be Portland, might be Oklahoma City. I wouldn't – it wouldn't surprise me at least if Charlotte didn't get a team. But yeah. the problem with Charlotte is you got Atlanta to the south and you got Washington and Baltimore to the north. So – they might not get one, but I, I think more Portland- different than Chicago with Chicago, Milwaukee, and St. Louis, St. Louis, and Detroit. Kansas City, Minnesota. It's all right there. I think um, I think Portland's going to be one, and I, I I honestly think it's going to be Oklahoma City. I just have that feeling. But anyway, I yeah. I just uh, there's just certain teams, certain blue bloods that always rise to the top. It's like that in every league. It's maybe, even in college. I mean, it's, maybe they'll put a third team in in Florida. 
Right, but who's going to pitch? That's right. <laughs> I'm just joking. If I Florida, yeah, put, yeah, put a third team in Florida, yeah. Jacksonville or something. Uh, um, yeah, because this weekend, like I like I said before, we know who the the good teams are. I, I really, it's just a surprising how bad it gets real fast, including my team, the Mets, including even though they they came back back last night, but they lost by one. Um, and the Brewers are nothing to sneeze at. Uh, we'll see how the Diamondbacks are because I think they play the Yankees, and next week they play the Yankees. It's back to back, and I was like, "Oh, well, I know who they are." And then because it, it's the Yankees and somebody, of course, it's somebody, but they got two tough back to back um, series. Um, so it, it, it's going to come down to that. Of course, we anything can change. You said it. Injuries, trades. It just started. Really? It's gonna, I, yeah. It's going to take us the month of April for everything to kind of get into a flow. And then it's right. going to – then things are going to show up, and it's going to be in a flow. Then injuries are going to be important. And then when we get into midsummer, when we get close to the trade deadline – we're going to run into what we did last year. Are you going to be a seller or a buyer? And that's, that's right. going to come right down to the last couple of weeks. And, and that's been a when you add these extra playoff teams now, and you saw how tough it was last year for teams, and it's about pitching. It's about who wants to add more pitching to their into their team. Now, pitching has always been the most important part of the game, but even more so now. Yeah, yeah. Especially well, gonna- since, especially since. They were talking about Warren Spahn the other day on um, on the Oriole game. Palmer was talking about Warren Spahn, how he pitched, because uh, the owner of the Orioles wanted to know why they didn't have more complete games now. The new owner of the Orioles was in the booth. Why don't they have more complete games, you know? And Jim Palmer said, well, I mean, Warren Spahn set the record. Uh, he's pitched 27, 22. He was 20, 22 and 5. And he twitched 27 complete games out of 33 starts one year. And he yeah. said, but that was commonplace for people to pitch 20, 25 complete games. I, I, I've gone over this, and I bet you he pitched like 140 pitches. So Because they, they pitched the contact. Not everybody in the lineup could put it four rows deep. Well, see, Jim Palmer said, he said, when I pitched, I could throw the ball 100 miles an hour. I just didn't. Right. It wouldn't last. Right, and now that's they tell them every pitch, give it everything you got. We'll come out in the fifth or sixth inning and grab you. I said it last week. They're not. They're not. They're not grooming starters. They're grooming long relievers. Yeah, you're exactly right. So it's just on how you look at it. Um, I was trying to make a video yesterday, and my computer wouldn't cooperate with me. But uh, I, I said on there, you know, the game has changed. The concepts haven't changed. But the players that play it have changed. It's still hitting, pitching, catching, all of that stuff. But how the guys play it, they're bigger, stronger, they practice, they, they, they know every tendency out there. They are more prepared than ever to see a pitcher coming from the bullpen. These guys are ready to play at an earlier age. So that makes, to me, the game more interesting and a little bit, I think, harder than when it was when I was a kid. Those guys in the 70s couldn't really probably play in this type of baseball. It's a, it's a different th- – it's the same game. It's just played a little differently now. You don't – you know, could George Brett play? Yeah, George Brett could play in any era. I'm talking about the regular old dude. Uh, it's just different. It's just a different game, and, and that's how it is. My, my friends have said it before. The guys that played in pre-war that batted had a consistently 350 average would bat 150 in today's game because of the way they pitched. It was a different game. Yeah, uh, it was. It was a completely different game. Right. So uh, the concepts are always the same. And that's why I won't compare players. It, it, you know, who was a better player, Mickey Mantle you know, or Carl Yastrzemski? I said they played 20 years apart. Right. I'm not going to compare. I'm, who's better, Michael Jordan or LeBron? I don't and care. I, 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 I feel like that era of ball player was Willie Mays, but <laughs> you know that, that's two each his own. 
Um, I mean, it's, it's it's when I was a kid, I if you were going to pick one uh, outstanding pitcher when I was coming up, if I had to pick one pitcher to win a ball game, it would be uh, Sandy Koufax. Right. Sandy Koufax would be my guy, and he had to reply to retire at thirty years old because of arthritis in his elbow. Yeah, um, after he won after he won another World Series. Right. So I mean, that, and he was the best I've ever seen on the mound. And and as far as you know, all around players, it'd be hard to beat Clemente. Yeah. But I'm like you. If I had to pick one guy back there, I mean, just because everybody liked, I was a Duke Snyder fan, but Willie Mays was a heck of a boy. And Willie Mays was the man. I mean, he just was the guy in right. center field, and that's. But when all around player five tool, Clemente was hard to beat. Right. Well, we're going to leave it at that. You can't. Let's let's leave it on Clemente. We're not going to do it any better. There you go. Uh, and uh, enjoy. Watch the games. Enjoy the games. You know, you don't have to sit there and just like be on every pitch of every game. You know. Uh, but if you enjoy the sport, I, I love it. it. It's it's called a pastime for a reason. Not it's not because it's the number one white sport. It's just a passage of time, and uh, and we could all relate to that. So until next time, like, share, tell a friend, and we'll see. You.